Oh, I'd love it, Stan. I can't. No, we got a bit of a do on. Well, I'd love to skip it. I can't. I mean, it's my son's wedding. A bit of a do. A bit of a do. Smiling faces in public places. Getting to know the in laws much better than expected. A bit of a do. Invited to a bit of a do. It's a small town, posh nosh affair. Best behavior, being aware of others who are doing it too. Others who are seeing through you. A bit of a do. All tickety boo. A bride's dimension attracts attention. A scruffy young groom who defies convention. A bit of a do, bit of a do. Invited to a bit of a do. Do do do. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God. Who I don't believe in. Oh, I wish we'd done it in a registry office. Which is an honorable estate instituted of God in the time of man's innocency, signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church. Which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee and is commended of St. Paul to be honorable among all men, and therefore is not by any to be enterprised nor taken in hand unadvisedly, lightly, or wantonly to satisfy men's carnal lusts and appetites. No mention of women's carnal lusts and appetites, I notice. But reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly. Oh, I hope so. I'll be watching her. I'll be watching him. If he lets the side down today. First, it was ordained for the procreation of children. Yeah, well, I'm afraid we jumped the gun a bit there. Secondly, it was ordained for a remedy against sin and to avoid fornication. Sorry. Such persons as have not the gift of continency. All right. Hi. Undefiled members of Christ's body. Thirdly, it was ordained for the mutual society, help and comfort that the one ought to have of the other, both in prosperity and adversity. Into which holy estate these two persons present come now to be joined. Therefore, if any man can show any just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Say something, somebody, please. Save my daughter from this unsuitable marriage, I beg you. Paul, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife to live together after... He promised me to have his hair cut. He promised. In sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto her, so long as ye both shall live. Oh, Jane, do you remember our wedding? I will. Jenny, wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband? Look happy, Lawrence. Look happy long enough, and who knows, you may even start to feel happy. And forsaking all other, keep thee only unto him, so long as ye both shall live. Oh, Lord, 
Why did you take her from me? I will. Paul's hair. Mm, it's on the top of his head as usual. He promised me that it could Teddy promised. I mean, what must they think? They already think we're not good enough for them. Come on, Reese, he's only a dentist. He's not First Lord of the Admiralty. Here they come now. Look happy. Mm. <laughs> 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 Didn't it go off well? Mm. Oh, oh, very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You must be very happy. Oh, yes. Jenny looked a picture. A picture. I think she's putting on a bit of weight. It suits her. Uh, do you all know each other? Uh, no. Uh, no. No? Ah, um, Neville Badger, a very old friend of ours. Paul's parents, Ted and uh, Rita Simcock. Very How'd you do? <clears throat> I own the Jupiter Foundry. I expect you heard of us. Well, actually, no. Oh, we make fire irons, companion sets, door knockers, um, toasting forks. Are you a dentist as well, Mr. Badger? Oh, no, no. Uh, no, I'm with Badger, Badger, Fox and Badger. Oh. oh. Taxidermist. Oh, solicitors. <laughs> I'll remember that next time I nick some spoons. <laughs> um, I, I do like a good wedding, don't you, Mr. Badger? Yes, I... Yeah. I do. I... Excuse me. His wife died six weeks ago. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh that went off <laughs> splendidly. Oh, it's all right. <clears throat> oh, uh, this is uh, Jenny's parents, Lawrence and Liz Rodenhurst. I don't think you've met very old friends of ours, Rodney and Betty Silito. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rodney's managing director of Cockadoodle Chickens. Oh, man of power. Your daughter looked a picture. Hey, picture. Well, that one. Grand. Grand. Uh, uh, um, the bride's parents, Lawrence and Liz Roldenhurst. This is Rita's parents, Percy and Carrie Sprague. How do you do? Yeah, by heck, your daughter's a belter. <laughs> Aye. I've only been once since breakfast. I feel awful. What? Right. Big smiles, please. Radiance pouring from every pore. Great. Terrific. Wearing white. Hypocrisy is the national disease and we've started to build our marriage on hypocritical foundations. Jenny. Right. Now a nice dreamy one, OK? Uh, two lovebirds gazing into each other's eyes. Great, tremendous, fabulous. The cost of my dress could feed an African family for 20 years. Jenny, just forget about all that, just for today. Eh? Okay, now a real sexy one. Nice, very nice. If our child grows up selfish and deceitful, it'll be our fault. Jenny. Okay, let's go for something a bit more informal now, right? Okay. <laughs> That's all the man I've just committed myself to for life can say, Jenny. Committed for life. Sounds like a prison sentence. Oh, Paul, you don't think that, do you? No, of course I don't. Very good, great, <coughs> tremendous, fantastic. Anything you want in the ironmongery line, Lawrence, you know, custom-built door knockers, personalised cold scuttles, you name it, I can let you have it at cost. Mm? Well, well, Liz. Seems this union can be of great benefit to our family. Okay, big smiles, happiest day of your life. Terrific, magnificent. In fact, Ted, we already have one of your companion sets in our drawing room. Oh, in your drawing room, very nice. I trust it's giving satisfactory service. 
Actually, the tongs have buckled. Okay, now a nice dignified one. Four pillars of local society linked by wedlock. Very good, great, tremendous. I'll let you have a replacement, gratis. Have no fear. Huh? Ted, you don't talk business at functions. Mr. Rodenhurst doesn't discuss dental appointments at functions. Okay, mm. now change partners. Symbolise that you're all one big happy family now. Um, actually, I think you're both due for a checkup. I'll have my girl send you one of our little cards. Oh. <clears throat> Arms around each other. Nice and friendly. Come on, no inhibitions, please. Relax, let it all hang out. Okay, happy couple back in with the two brothers. Elvis, have you met my brother Simon? No, it's one of the many pleasures I've missed out on so far. Oh, Simon, Paul's brother Elvis. Hello, Elvis. Hello. Okay, big smile. Bags of brotherly love. Amazing. Okay, say cheese, everybody. Cheese. cheese. From Marge. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, tremendous, fabulous. <laughs> You made an assignation with him yet? What? With whom? With whom, she said. The toasting fork tycoon. And he's your type, isn't he? Has that rough, coarse quality you regularly mistake for manly strength? I saw you looking at him. Why did you have to say fromage? Huh. What made people laugh? As a pity and embarrassment. Why did you have to ruin the greatest day of my life? I thought our wedding day was supposed to be the greatest day of your life. It was supposed to be. <laughs> See you back at the hotel, then. You look a picture, Jenny. Mm, a picture. <laughs> How old is your father? 76. Is he really? Yeah. Is he really? Well done. Well done indeed. <clears throat> I want you. You are. I ache for your body. Oh, yeah. My wife didn't upset you earlier. Uh, no, no, not at all. Oh, well, she's always putting her foot in it. <clears throat> so are there lots of young badgers all raring to join? Badger, badger, fox and badger? No, I... We couldn't have children. Mm. I... Oh, Lord, excuse me. So lost, so uncouth. Oh, <clears throat> oh, thank you. I, oh, hello, Jenny. She's beautiful. No, she's attractive. It's very different, but she's not beautiful. Well, I can see where she gets you from. Uh, being attractive, I mean, not being not beautiful. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think. <clears throat> Liz, <coughs> you know what you were saying earlier. I mean, wasn't that a bit naughty? Yeah. I mean, I know that words needn't mean very much, but I mean, you know, they can be. I mean, can't they? You know, be a bit disturbing, be or dangerous. Do you really think my words don't mean very much? Surely, they aren't a total surprise. Well, I'm. Um, well, no, I suppose I've 
known for some time that you were, um... A flame with sexual hunger? Yes, a flame with... No, 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 Liz, please, really, I mean... Come on, you knew that you didn't find me unattractive. I sensed that you didn't find me repulsive. Well, I sense that you don't find me repulsive either. Oh, no, I don't. Of course I don't. I mean, you aren't. Have a tuna fish volivon, they are delicious. Don't you want me? Of course I do. Of course I do, but... Uh... Well, what do you mean, Buck? Heck, this is awful. Awful? It's exciting. It's wonderful. I'm alive again. Absolutely, I mean, I agree, absolutely. It is exciting, it's absolutely wonderful, but... Oh, it's awful. Exactly. Oh, dear. Poor Ted. Poor, poor Ted. But you promised, Paul. And I mean, what was this thing? I see. Even on my wedding day, the parrot cry of the narrow-minded. What must they think? You don't understand the way the minds operate. They look down on us. We're trade, their professions. In his own mind, he's practically on a par with doctors, that one. In Bolivia, they have 65% infant mortality. The average life expectancy of the tin miners is 37. The typical diet is boiled maize, followed, if they're lucky, by more boiled maize. Extra boiled maize is a treat at Christmas. So I honestly don't think that my hair cut matters very much. Exactly. So it's not too much to have to have it cut, then, is Bloody it? Bloody hell, Eric. I'll see you later. Where are you going? That new unisex place in New Ball. Oh! Nobody goes for a haircut in the middle of his wedding reception. Then it's time to break the mould of British social behaviour. If you want me with a haircut, you shall have me with a haircut. I wouldn't want to start my honeymoon riddled with guilt. Might make me impotent. Then they would like... There's no need to be disgusting, Paul! You're absolutely right. You are? Well, you said words are too easy. Action is the thing. Oh, absolutely. What? Meet me in room 108 in five minutes. Mm, OK, I'll... You what? <clears throat> you... you what? Well, I've booked room 108. What, for them to change in? For me to do my hair and if it was <clears throat> blown to bits in the churchyard, meet me there in five minutes. Oh, Liz! Don't you want to? Of course I want to, but... Oh, what again? But what? <laughs> I'm the groom's father. You're the bride's mother. I mean, it's their wedding day. Is doing it any worse than wanting to do it? Well, no, no, of course not. But they, they may come to the room themselves. In the middle of their wedding reception? No, I mean, they'll be cutting the cake. There'll be the speeches. We'll be back. Well, I mean, nobody will miss us in this crash. I mean, Liz, we are pillars of the local community. I mean, pillars of the local community. Just, they don't do that sort of thing. I mean, they just don't. Oh, yes, they do. They just don't get found out, as we won't. Well, we'll never get a safe moment. Room 108, in five minutes. Five, five. Oh, I'm... Oh, Oh, utterly and confounded, eh? Oh, God, it's you! Can I have a word, Ted? Yes, as long as it doesn't take too long. I mean, oh, God. What? Um, no, nothing, nothing of it. <laughs> you... Right. What? It's our Paul. He's gone. Gone? They're never splitting up already. I realise that youngsters these days don't regard marriage as sacred, but I mean, what, hour and ten minutes? No, 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 no. He's, he's gone to get an haircut. Mm. He's done what? He's done... Is he mad? He... Oh, oh, that's you, Rita. You've been having a go at him again, haven't you, eh? Well, I may have just touched on it. Oh, eh. <laughs> 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 oh, all right, Peter, love. What's, what's, what's the matter? What's the matter, love? Eh? Everybody says what a picture Jenny looks. Well, she does. Well, nobody says what a picture Paul looks. Well, he doesn't. No, don't mm -hmm. leave me on my own, Ted. I hate functions. I feel so dreary, drab, dull. Rita, love, don't be so silly. Don't be so self-conscious. Nobody's looking at you. Exactly. I'm just a grey smudge. You aren't. You are not a grey smudge. Rita. Look, I'm a man of discernment. I'm a leader of industry. Would I have married a grey smudge? I mean, would I? Well, I wasn't a grey smudge when you married me. Rita, love. Look, I'm an Englishman. Well, I mean, I'm a Yorkshireman. 
can't come out with sweet nothings. I mean, you know, I just can't. But I promise you, love, that you aren't, to me, in any way, a grace much. What more can I say? Hmm? Yeah. Come on, come on. Eh? Yeah. <clears throat> Now, look, there's Lawrence over there. Go on, now, do your bit. Use your charm. Establish our social credibility. Off you go, love. Go on. Where are you going? If you must know, I feel a pressing need to perform a certain natural function. David, you don't talk about functions like that at functions like this. Oh, well, you asked. Go on, go on, love. Go on. It's a lovely buffet. Tuna fish volivants are a revelation. Well, they have a good reputation here. It's a lovely do all together. I do love lovely do's, do you? Very much. Uh... Are you going anywhere special for your holidays this year? Yes. That one too. Yes, but. We're going to the south of France with Rodney and Betty Silito. Well, it's a bit more sophisticated than Spain these days. We like to do something a bit out of the ordinary. Where are you going? Peru. Ah, hello. How are Mr and Mrs Twig? Sprague. Are you really? That's grand. I love these old dialect words. Dialect words? Sprague. That's my name. Ah. I act, Mr. Road Nurse, all them cars in car park. One lifetime, so many changes. Eh, hey, Clary? Aye, Percy, we've seen a few changes. Do you know, I can remember when it were all horses. Horse manure all over the road. Percy. We used to shovel it up off roads whilst it was still steaming. Dad! The Alcyon days of rhubarb. Never to return. Fascinating snippet of social history. Excuse me. Why do you always have to show me up? Because you always think I'm going to show you up. Do you usually make love with your clothes on? No, 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 it's not. <clears throat> it's just I can, I can, I can hear a reception. They're chatting. They're laughing. Yeah. They haven't missed us. But they might be able to hear us. Not all that noise. Oh, that sounds promising. Hey, Liz, please. Real. You're wasting time. And even I agree. I shouldn't be away too long. No, no. Oh. <sighs> Don't you want me? Oh, Liz. Oh, oh, Eck. Your dress is lovely, Jenny, lovely. Thank you. I kept my accessories to a minimum in view of all the suffering in the third world. Ah. Aren't you going to laugh at me? No, why should I? You have a point. It's funny, you seem quite human. I beg your pardon? You seem quite nice, but you run a kind of concentration camp for chickens. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Well, not today. Yes, you should, because you meant it. And I admire you for it. Well, it's just that I think that if we think we have the right to exploit animals because we're superior to them, well, that makes us inferior to them because they never exploit us. Does that make me a crank? Uh, no. We can never resist an attractive young woman. Don't you ever feel jealous? It doesn't mean anything by it. Just likes being near attractive young women. Oh, I envy you. Traitor. <laughs> oh, she does look a picture, I must say. Must you? Traitor. Chickens aren't like people, Jenny. They don't have the same feelings. They don't have the same expectation of lifestyle. I know. Fish have no nerves in their mouths. Foxes enjoy being hunted and lobsters get a sexual thrill out of being boiled alive. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Not today. <clears throat> 
But how can you live with yourself knowing how your chickens live? I love him for his foibles. <laughs> but you must feel envy sometimes. No. No, I wouldn't want anything in my life to be any different from what it is. <sighs> I envy you. I don't look at it the same road as you do, Jenny. They're units, costed items. See, I employ 300 people in an area of high unemployment. I couldn't do that without my cheap mass-produced methods. I suppose that's what people do. Compartmentalise. I mean, they say Himmler was very fond of dogs. What is it, Goebbels? It must be dogs. I don't think he were at all fond of Goebbels. No, I'm... How can you joke when I'm comparing you to it? Uh, well, not that I meant that you're... Oh, sorry. Oh, bless you. <laughs> oh, you're being patronising now. You're forgiving me because I'm an attractive young thing. I don't want that. I hate that. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Not today. Oh. <laughs> oh, bless them. I envy you. Rita! <laughs> Please, wake up. We've got to get downstairs. Come on, come on. I'm sorry to hear you can't get a job, Elvis. Oh, that's all right then, Simon. That makes me feel much better about the total uselessness of any life. I'm trying to be pleasant, Elvis. Effort, is it? I just thought that as we're related by marriage now, Elvis, it would be a good idea if we tried to get along. You're right. I'll try. Sorry, sir. Were you named after... Of course it was, you silly twit. Oh, dear. Now, Rita, you can't be responsible for how everyone behaves or you'll crack up. Now, come on, relax. Have a drink. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. But, really, you shouldn't have a chip on your shoulder about a name. Well, how would you like it, Simon, if you were called Garfunkel? What did you read at university? Dirty books, mainly. No, I meant... I know. That was a little thing we Simcox call a joke. Philosophy. Philosophy? Well, don't sound so scornful. I've registered as a philosopher at the job centre. No luck yet? Why, what do you do? I'm an estate agent. Ah. Uh, what do you mean, ah? Uh. I meant, ah, uh, I can't think of anything to say in response to something so incredibly boring. I'll say, ah. Well, you can mock, but, well, selling houses is a bit more useful than philosophy. Well, I don't think Bertrand Russell and Nietzsche would agree with you. Bertrand Russell and Nietzsche? Are they the biggest state agents over at Bevan? The famous philosophers, ignoramus. I know. It was what we Rodenhurst call a joke. <laughs> now, relax. You can't control how your two families get on single-handed. <laughs> Where have you been? Having it off with the King of the Dogs. What? I'm joking. Well, where have you been? I, uh, I needed some fresh air. Well, in the immortal words you have used to me so often, I have a headache. Hello! Well, I feel the need for some more champagne. Oh. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm practically a fixture in this corner. Good idea. <laughs> Oh, no, no, not for the drink, no. So that I can keep an eye on my wretched husband. He has been known to overindulge. Haven't we all? No. What? Oh, I know how much I like, and I know how much is good for me. I won't change my ways just to please the so-called fashionable. Well, why should you? Well, well, I must say, Mrs. Rodenhurst, it is a lovely do. Them tuna fish volivants are quite an eye-opener. Mrs. Rodenhurst, Liz. We're related now. Oh, incidentally, where is that lovely husband of yours? Well, um, Miss, um, Liz. Well, I, I can't really say. A mystery, how intrigued. No, 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 there's no mystery. No, it is, well, it is answering an urgent call of nature. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, um, enjoy yourself. <laughs> She hates me.
cordial. You too, your time. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> I've been really badly. I think it must have been the tuna fish volumes. Oh, the delicious, Dad. The different. Yeah, well, they're different, all right. It's just that I happen to be allergic, that's all. I mean, you know, do you remember Sorrento? Sorrento? Yeah, I had tuna fish then, didn't I? Well, that was 25 years ago. You know, what difference does that make? It's lifelong, isn't it? An allergy. Well, why did you eat the volivants then if you knew you were allergic? Because of re... Because, Rita, love, I didn't realise I were allergic until I had the tuna fish volume. I've only just discovered the common denominator, tuna fish. <clears throat> What's the matter, love? Eh? Sorrento. You are? We were happy then. Oh, we're happy now. I mean, we are, aren't we? I'm not. I'm absolutely miserable. I'm happy. Well, no, I mean, reasonably. I mean, well, you know, life's no picnic, but I mean... No, I'm not unhappy, so, I mean, you know, why are you, eh? You shouldn't be drinking champagne, not if you've been badly. Too. Ah, no, no, that's no, true, good. Anybody notice that Paul's missing? No. Good, good. Good? It's a great tribute to our son's personality, isn't it? It's the first man in the history of the universe to go for a haircut in the middle of his wedding reception and nobody even notices. You're never satisfied, you, are you? Only meant good because nobody notices he's missing, that's well, all. Don't you think they'll be a bit surprised when he comes back with a short back and sides? Hello. I sh uh, hello. hello. Have you seen Paul? No, not recently, no. Oh, well, I just realised I haven't seen him around for quite a while. Oh, my word. Oh. Married for over an hour and he's still so devoted to him. Hey, Rita, love, Rita. Hey. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm all on edge. <sighs> Weddings. I want us to be good friends. Oh, so do I, Jenny. So do I. <laughs> well, where is he? He's gone for air cut. What? During his wedding reception? Well, it's, it's probably my fault. You see, he promised he'd have it done and I ticked him off about it. Are you thinking of coming on the honeymoon? He what? Well, I mean, if he goes for a haircut during his wedding reception because you tell him to, he may need you on the honeymoon to tell him what to do. Oh, oh I, I went for a walk. I was nervous. It's not much of a haircut. I never intended to have it cut. I just wanted to frighten her. Oh, Jenny. I love you. Oh, Paul. I'm lying. I was going to have it cut, but there were a queue. Oh, Paul! Je what a start. They'll sort you down, you'll see. What does marriage mean these days? Oh, come on, give him a chance, love. What does our marriage mean? It means... It means I love you, love. Do you? It's love. Really? I'm sorry. But I'm frightened for them. I mean, what chance have they got if they haven't got any back up? What do you mean, back up? Well, I mean, our two families making a real effort to be friendly with each other. I'm doing my bit. Rita, love, what are you doing? Nothing. Exactly. Now, come on, love, please, mingle. Why? Nobody wants to talk to me. I can see it in their eyes when I approach. Oh, God, here she comes. Now, that's rubbish. That is absolute rubbish. Now, come on, love, please, make an effort for Paul's sake. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Just give me a minute, Ted. Oh, all right, love, come on. <clears throat> Reinforcements for Liz. Oh, ah. I'm a lucky man, aren't I? Pardon? My wife's a very attractive woman. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yeah. I, mean, I, I, I suppose she is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I hadn't actually... Um, um, well, I mean, I had. I had noticed, but I uh, hadn't... Well, you couldn't help not, could you, really? Because it, you know, it sticks out a mile. No. See, what I meant was that I hadn't... <clears throat> yes. Yes, she is. Yes, yes. I suppose you are. Yes. Lord Paul gave a very good speech, considering. Thank you. What do you mean, considering? 
Paul? Paul, your mother's in there all on her own. She looks lost. Oh, I, I shouldn't have gone off like that. Well, give up, Simon. We've tried politics, royalty, class, sex, nuclear weapons, blood sports, estate agents' fees and Belgian beer, and we haven't found anything we agree about yet. Sorry to interrupt. Please do. Um, Elvis, it's your mother. She's looking a bit adrift. I think she needs rescuing. Well, not the US cavalry, Jenny. Well, it wouldn't cost much to go and talk to your own mother, would it? Hello, oh, Mum. You all right? Fine. Mum, I'm sorry I went off like that. I thought you were going to miss the cutting of the cake. I mean, what would they have thought? Oh, hello, our Mum. I wonder where you got to. Who sent you? What? You both come out here to cheer me up. For a moment, I thought it was spontaneous. Mum, what's wrong? Oh, I'm finding this awful. Our two families just aren't going to get along. Well, I'm trying my best with Simon. Unfortunately, he's a total bird. Elvis, do me a favour, belt up. A surprisingly good speech, I thought, Paul, considering. My old mate Terry is the worst best man I've ever come across. I couldn't make out whether we're drunk or dys dyslexic. Hey, hey, hey. Dyslexia isn't a laughing matter, Elvis. Oh, I'm sorry, he is dyslexic, is he? No, he's drunk. But he could have been. It's yet another proof that this is not a caring society. I mean, fancy calling the condition of not being able to spell by a word that nobody can spell. Now, you see, all this caring about things, Paul, it worries me. You never used to care about things. Never used to turn a hair about dyslexia among Bolivian tin miners. They don't have that problem, Mum. Oh, good. They're illiterate. She's changed you. Yes. Yes, until I met Jenny, I was a great wet slob. Well, I <laughs> love that great wet slob. It was my son. I don't know what I'm going to do. Mum, what's up? It's, they don't need one. No one needs one. She's all right. She's just got the idea that our two families aren't getting on. Oh, God, we're going to have to do something about this. Look, um, you get my father to talk to your mum. I'll get your dad talking to my mother. Right. Oh, heck. Straight up to the bathroom, violent deal, and flushes the second set down. Two sets in as many months. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Paul. Hello. I, I wonder if you could do something for me. Well, of course, if I can. What is it that I can do for you? Mum. I beg your pardon? Mum, she's a bit upset. Oh, Mum? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, lo losing her son, all that. You know me, Mum. Well, no, <laughs> no, you don't, but... You know. You'd like me to have a little chat with her? Yeah, yeah, if, if you could. She's, she's not very good with people. So if you could sort of, uh, you know, without, without her knowing, that'd, that'd be great. Fine, fine. Well, um, yes, fine. I'll, I'll just top up my glass and uh, steam in. Mm. Oh, no, please. There's no need to bother with me, really. You are? I shouldn't have come. People melt away when I approach them. They form groups to exclude me. <laughs> Surely not. I mean, this is England. I mean, this is Yorkshire. Oh, I'm not blaming them. They just can't cope. Oh, God, here comes poor Neville, who talks about his dead wife and has tears in his eyes. You'd think a solicitor should know that grown men don't cry. Hey, Neville. She'd have loved this day. She adored Jenny. can I say? Precisely. Leave me be, Ted. I'm a ship without a rudder, drifting on a cold grey sea. Exactly. You're the very man. I know a harbour where there's a peeling old houseboat in need of a lick of paint. Peeling old houseboat? My wife. Yeah, she's finding this difficult and all. I, w I wonder if it would be too much trouble, you know, for you to... Um... To bring my charm to bear? Ah. Why not? At <clears throat> some point in my existing for ten minutes or so? Good look, she's in the other barn. Now, why don't you take her and play to them tuna fish volleyballs because she loves them? Right, will do. I'll just uh, fill up my glass and uh, steam in. Good man, good man. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Ted, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to feel that our two families could be friends. Well, yeah, but so would I, Jenny. So would I very much so. Huh? Go and talk to Mum. I'd like you to get to know her better. Bloody hell. 
Uh, no, I mean, sorry. If you'd only give her a chance. <clears throat> uh, yes, all right, all right, Jenny, I'll give her a chance. Yes. Yes. I, I think she's up here. All right, right. where is she? Oh, there she is. Oh. <clears throat> Mum? Mum? I'd like you and Ted to be friends. Well, that's nice. That's very nice. Well, I don't see why we shouldn't try and be friends, do you, Ted? Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 no. I don't see why we shouldn't try to be friends at all, no. <laughs> Good. If she knew... I know, I know. I feel terrible. Oh, Lord. You don't suffer from post-coital depression, do you? Liz, please. I mean, really, Liz. Do you know, I've often thought that would make a good slogan. Hmm? I mean, if there was a sex marketing board. Post-coital for Christmas. Liz, please. I'm feeling terrible. I'm feeling guilty. Do you want to forget it ever happened? And make sure it never happens again? Of course I don't. You know I don't. Well, then. I mean, nobody suffered. Nobody knows. I think Lawrence suspects. Oh, well, yes, possibly. Lawrence and I have an arrangement. I do what I like, provided I'm reasonably discreet, and he doesn't do anything. Mm. Liz, I don't regard what we've done today as being reasonably discreet. I'm out of my depth. You're going to find that you are a much better swimmer than you ever believed. Ah, there you are. Yes, hello. You know, Rita, I think you and I have a lot in common. Well, how do you make that out? I may seem to you to be the happy professional man, successful dentist, lovely house, beautiful wife, two highly satisfactory children, suave, confident, good-looking. Actually, I am a seething mass of doubts, and inadequacies. Are you suggesting I'm a seething mass of doubts and inadequacies? No. Good heavens, no. Well, what did you say we had a lot in common for, then? <laughs> Why on earth should anybody say that you can't handle people? Who told you that? Who sent you? Oh, Lord. People are being sent out in streams to see if I'm all right. It's very worrying. Well, aren't you going to come in? Yes. In a minute. Now, Lawrence, will you please leave me alone? Right. Right. <coughs> ah, there you are. All right, who sent you? I feel sick. I thought it was only in the mornings. Oh, it's the tension, Paul. We've let the baby down, pretending it doesn't exist. Who knows what insecurities it may bring on? The science of the unborn baby is still in its infancy. Oh, oh. I think I might be going to be sick. Well, walk out. Calmly. Look natural. Look natural? What? They say as men get older, they start to take after their mothers. That's a dreadful thing to say. Jenny, have a tuna fish bollop on. Paul, have I'm a tuna fish. Sorry, I must go to. It was a dreadful thing to say. But then again, it was dreadful of me to say it was a dreadful thing to say. I mean, in her condition. I mean, on her wedding day. Our wedding day. Any luck with Rita? Oh, no. Sorry. Have a tuna fish bollop on. Oh, cheers. Ah, 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 ah. You mustn't eat those. You're allergic. Ah. It's a lovely wedding. Thank you. Really lovely. No, 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 I mean it. Really lovely. Really, really lovely. Well, they do these things well here. Yes, but the point that I'm trying to get across is that this has been a lovely wedding. The message is getting through, I do assure you. <laughs> Terrible snobs, these road nests. We've made it, haven't we? You are? 
in life. Oh, aye. Time exporting frozen chicken drumsticks to Matamili land. Your door knockers in the shape of lions are gracing every near George in front door now, Woodley. <laughs> with ladies. And remain friends. Oh, I feel good, Ted. It's a right good do. A happy day. Nobody's happier than Betty. Oh, Lord. Pass if I can get her off the premises without a scene, bless her. Oh, I envy you. Aye. Hmm? You needn't bother sending anybody else out. I've found a tiny reserve of strength. I'm ready for the fray. Rita, love, what a way to look at it. It's a wedding, not a fray. All right. She's been sick. Sick? Well, usually only in the mornings, but today in the afternoon. Oh, heck. Everybody, please. What? I've got to, Paul. Everybody, please, I have an announcement to make. Pregnant. I I'm sorry. Well, we should have told you before, but, uh, well, we knew how much you were all looking forward to a bit of a do, a white wedding and everything. And, uh, well, well, we decided to go through with it and then go away or something so you didn't cotton on to dates because uh, we know some of you still sort of think that sort of thing's important. Jenny, <laughs> come on, Jenny, come on. Sorry, we should have just gone and Dantley quietly on our own like we wanted to. And we wanted you all to have a lovely day. Like we knew you wanted. Come on. <laughs> let's go and get changed, we'll be going. I'm sorry. Come on, love. <laughs> Can I have the car keys? I'm going to sit him in the car. He's had enough. I haven't. I want to stick it out to bitter end. I'm not sure I appreciate that, Ray. No, no, Rodney. No, it must be said. <laughs> this has been a lovely wedding. The, the tuna fish bullivals were disgusting. And all right. So some of the biggest snobs in this town are in this room. No names, no dentist drills. <laughs> but it has been a lovely wedding. Give or take the odd snob and volleyball. And that's the main thing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Never mind. Come on, Rodney. Can't you see we're interrupting a family row? Goodbye. Thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, please. You can't be held responsible for the behaviour of your friends. <laughs> so our poor good lady. I'm not surprised. She's a right cracker. <laughs> or your relatives. Go to the car, Dad. Yeah. She wants to get rid of oh, me. Dad, she didn't want me to come. Says. She's never welcomed Dad. me in her house. She pretends it's Ted, but Ted's all right. Now, come on, Father. Yeah, it's a bit different from our wedding, eh, Clary? June 21st, 1938. It's a long time ago. Jolly well done. I've never forgot the date. But it was exactly two months to the day after our Rita were born. Oh, Percy, oh, you oh, wicked oh, man. Oh, oh, well, I wouldn't have said it if she hadn't wanted me out of the way. Hey, come on, brother, I need to go. It's the only good thing about being old. You don't have to give a booker. There's no need to look at me like that, Mrs. Rodnurst. I was smiling, Mrs. Simcock. We don't need your smiles, Mrs. Rodnurst. After all, your family isn't as pure as the driven snow. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, your daughter's pregnant on a wedding day. Your son did have something to do with that? Yes, I hope. Take. Mr. Simcock! I'll bet you 50 pounds you never make it as a philosopher. I mean, who ever heard of a famous philosopher called Elvis? <laughs> <gasps> oh, my oh. God! Are you all right? Oh! I'm off now. Goodbye and thank you. I'm sorry if I... It was just too soon. 
I just couldn't cope with the sight of so many people enjoying themselves. 